Hello, and welcome to this lesson in which we're going to implement a D flip-flop in Verilog. Before we get into the code, let's just kind of recap quickly what a D flip-flop is. So D flip-flop is a sequential circuit element. There we go, we'll call that D flip-flop. And we're going to consider two inputs. The first one we'll just call D. The second one is the clock. And one output, which we'll call Q. Now, you might remember from our previous videos on flip-flops that there's another output here, the Q naught. Since we're only interested in storing the value of D, we're not really going to use this Q naught for anything. So we're just going to sort of pretend it doesn't exist. So what we want to implement is a circuit that whenever a clock has a rising edge, that means it goes from zero to one, then we want to set Q equal to D. Otherwise, we want it to remain unchanged. So that's what we're going to implement in Verilog. And as you'll see, it's relatively simple. So I've got an empty folder here in Visual Studio Code. Let's create a new file, and I'm going to call it just flipflop.v. And let's create our module declaration, module flipflop. It has input D and the clock and output Q. End it with a semicolon in module. And it has input D and clock. An output, and we're going to do a special thing here. We're going to create an output register Q. This basically, this reg statement makes it a flip flop, right? The compiler or the synthesizer is going to sort of look at this and say, all right, we need to use a flip flop to make reg. So, what we're doing here is a little bit superficial, um, but it illustrates the point pretty well. So, what we're going to do is go always at. Now, we want our flip flops to trigger on the positive edge of the clock. So, we'll go pause edge of clock begin and end, and all we'll do here is just say that Q is equal to D. And that's it. That's all we need to do to implement this flip-flop, this single flip-flop module. So let's go ahead and test it. We'll create a test bench. We'll call it flip-flop TB dot V. We need to make sure to include, well, let's first do our time scale. Because there's really no reason why you should do it in any order. In particular, one nanosecond, one nanosecond. Now we'll include flip flop dot v. Create our test bench module. Uh, let's call it test bench in module. Now let's have our inputs reg d equals zero and clock equals zero. It's always a good idea to initialize these with values, especially the clock. And we have our output wire Q. Now we need our unit under test, our flip-flop module, flip-flop, UUT, D, clock, and Q. Next up, we need to get our clock running. So we'll do always at, or excuse me, always begin and end clock equals not clock, and let's delay for 10 nanoseconds. So we'll have the clock running at half or double the speed that our signals are updating. So initial, begin, and end. So we need to start by creating our output waveform file. Dump file, we'll call this flipflop.vcd. vars zero test bench and then let's go do the thing so the register D has zero in it so we'll say that um, let's do this let's just say D is equal to one and delay for 20 and D is equal to actually let's do this let's delay for 40, 
just to get a little bit longer, and we'll say D is equal to zero, and we'll delay for 40 more. So we'll delay for double the time that we usually do. Now, because we've got that clock running, it's extra important that we wrap things up with a finish statement to let the simulator know to stop. And I believe that is everything that we need to do this. So now let's jump over to our PowerShell. Um, let's see. Make sure I navigate to where I want to be. And now we're ready to try it out. So I very long option O. We're going to create flipflop.vvp from flipflop.tb.v. All right, we've got some syntax errors. So let's take a look. It says that tb line six invalid module instantiation. So let's take a look. Range uh, d equals zero. Clock. Oh, I shouldn't have had a semicolon there. I should have had a comma. So let's go back and try again. There we go. Now it's working. Now we want to go VVP, flip flop dot VVP, no errors, our file was created. Now let's open GTK wave and see our file. So GTK wave, GTK wave, load it with flip flop dot VCD. And let's see what we got. We got a test bench. Let's grab our stuff. And there we go. So let's see, so D was equal to, when D was set equal to one, Q was set equal to one, and then when it went to zero, Q also went to zero. You know what, I wanna actually change this. I don't like the way it's lining up. So let's go back and modify our test bench real quick. Um, in fact, let's start with D equals zero. And let's offset just a little bit. Let's do a weird value. Let's do delay for 45, that way, the clock and these signals won't change at the same time. And we'll get to see the updating on the rising edge happening in real time. So let's go ahead and recreate our simulation. VVP, GTK wave. And there we go. That's a little bit more interesting to look at. So we can see that while D is zero, the clock's running, everything stays at zero. And then we have the D going to one, but notice that it's not until the clock hits its rising edge right there, that Q updates to one. And then here, D updated, but it was on the falling edge. And again, it's not until the rising edge of the clock that Q updated and went to zero. So there we go. So now we see our flip-flop is executing properly. So that's it for this lesson. As always, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, um, just let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.